today's video, I'm going to share with you a few tips that are going to help you go on the, the path of the economy picking in a melodic way. Grab your guitar. We're going to get started right after this. Hello, my name is David Wallam and welcome to this channel, which is all about helping guitar players around the world find their unique voice on the instrument to tell their own personal musical story. And when I say guitar players around the world, I, I mean me too. I'm the first student here. And today we are kind of revisiting last year. Flashback. Last year, about a year ago, I, I, I was not just not happy with my non-ability to play fast for a longer extended period of time, I was never really a shredder. And so when I tried different techniques, I tried, you know, I tried the alternate picking thing. I uh, never really got it. Tried the legato. It was a little better. And then tried the economy picking a little bit, but oh my gosh, it, I, it never clicked. And so finally I decided, okay, which of the techniques used to go fast are the most comfortable to me? And that was economy picking. So that's the lesson is about economy picking. But in order to develop that technique, I didn't want to just learn a bunch of different licks. I really wanted to study the mechanics of that. And I discovered a few things that helped me um, speed up my, pro my progress a little bit. I'm not a master of it, but I think I had quite a few things in the last year that I want to pass on to you. First, what is economy picking? Well, Economy picking is a mix of two techniques, really. It's a mix of alternate picking, strict alternate picking, where you're going down, up, down, up, down, up with your pick. And sweeping, where you are sweeping across the string. So the, sweep, the pure sweeping technique works when you have consecutive strings. So if I want a string from the sixth to the first, the right hand movement is just like you're strumming a chord. It's exactly that, the right hand. Now, the difference between strumming a chord and the sweeping, the sweeping technique is you want every single note to, every single note to come out uh, clean as individual notes. And so economy picking is a mix of both. Whenever you are going to uh, the next string, you want to do it in the same movement. So if I am ascending the strings from the, the sixth to the first, ascending in, in pitch, I would do uh, a downward motion. So I can do that just between two strings. Anything else that is happening on the same string is going to be alternate picking. Now the difficulty with that, and that comes to point number one to help you develop that technique, is that you kind of have to plan your moves. And when you're playing, when you're improvising, well, planning your moves is not, is not possible, right? That's the counter opposite of uh, improvisation. So. I thought to myself, I'm going to train my fingers so that they can, they can be comfortable in, in any situation and kind of free form so that the part of the economy tech, uh, picking technique improvisation thing is going to be completely directed by my fingers, finger memory and, and muscle movements and all that. And part of it is going to be controlled with my mind, which we'll come to in just a little bit. So the most important thing I thought was that Fluid fluidity of movement with my right hand and left hand. So I, would, I don't have to think about it. So I could free my mind from focusing on that to focus on other things, chord changes, um, feeling, no choices and all that. So I have a few exercises here that are going to help you. That's the first point. The first point is when you're developing that technique or any other technique for that matter, build in, build in micro exercises that are going to help you in any situation. So because the economy picking technique is a combination of um, alternate picking and sweeping, we need to get used to that change of strings. So here's the first exercise that I developed. I'm going to start with the downstroke. I'm going to use a, an E Dorian mode, just the, the first two string frets on the second string, 12, 14, 15, and on the first one, 12, 14, 15. And so the first exercise is down, up, down so that I can have the, the movement across. So 12, 14, 15, next string 12. Okay, so that's, and then I'm going to 15, 14, 12. Because that allows me to have down, up, down, down, up, down, up, up. 
Okay, so that's the exercise. This micro exercise allowed my allow my fingers, if done correctly and enough, to know that that particular movement is a way to cross a, uh, the strings upward and downward in both directions. Then once you have that, once you have the concept, you apply that to other to to the whole fretboard. multiple strings, multiple frets, multiple scales. Use your ear if you're not quite sure where to go. If you think that that sounds good, if you want to go to the next one you're playing. Uh, that's maybe not the right one, so just use your, your ears a lot. That's one of them. It just micro exercises to get used to that change. Another one, this is a new one that I incorporated into my playing, is something like this. because you have that movement. So what I'm doing here on the same exact uh, frets, same strings, I'm starting on the first string, 12, 14, 15, 12, 14, 12. So in other words, if I wanna apply this to other scales, when I'm looking at this, I have three notes, right? 12, 14, 15. From my perspective, I have a left note, a middle note, and a right note. So what I'm doing here is left, middle, Right, left, middle, left, and then I can transition. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six notes on that string, and then I transition, and then apply that to other strings. And so forth. This is the kind of thing that once you understand the concept, the direction, the number of notes, and, and the the fingering, your fingers are gonna take over and this kind of thing that you develop strengthen by doing passive practicing. That's the kind of practice where you're in front of the TV. Your fingers are kind of taking over and learning these concepts so that you can free your mind to think of other things. So that's the first thing that um, I, I acquired while developing that technique, just micro exercises that are really targeted and that focus on the actual technique. Now, another thing that really helped me is, is this. How to hold the pick and how much of the pick to come out. That's really important in that technique because if you're just playing strict alternate picking, you can kind of dig in. You don't have to have the same amount of uh, strength. I'm not good at alternate picking, but... You don't have to same, have the same exact amount of pressure on each note you're playing. Economy picking, on the other hand, is a technique that is that works really well for extended lines, and you don't necessarily want to have the this. It's more of a fluid type of technique, especially with uh, high gain. I'm going to switch to a lead tone. You want kind of every note to sound equal in, in volume. Yes, I totally, totally messed that up, but hopefully you get the idea. So we'll get used to the, the amount of pick. For me, I feel that um, I'm holding my pick between the thumb and the index. The pointy part of the pick is almost an extension of that, that curved bone that you have here, right here. And I don't have much coming out. I probably have, um, oh my gosh, how much do I have? Really not much at all. The least amount of pick coming out because that allows me to be consistent. If I, have, if I have too much of the pick coming out of my fingers, well, it's easier for me to, there's, there's more surface on the pick, right? And depending on where I'm hitting the strings, I'm gonna have a different tone. If I, if I hit it towards the middle of the pick, if I, towards the edge, it's a little softer. So the least amount that I have coming out, the more consistent I'm going to be. It's more fluid. It sounds more consistent with the technique. And then finally, the third uh, tip that I want to give you, as you've heard it so many times, playing slow. And why do you play slow? It's not just for the sake of playing slow. There's something 
very interesting that it happens when you play at the right speed, when you're developing a technique, which is a slower pace. You start to feel warmth. And I've talked about that before. And it's, it's not quite pain, but it's just warmth in your fingers. Warmth that is close to pain, but not quite. It doesn't quite hurt. That warmth, the best way I could describe it is I'm associating that with your, your fingers, your muscles, all that is not your brain, all that physical thing is sending messages to your brain. And that's felt like warmth. The message I think that is sent, or at least in my mind, the message that your fingers are sending to your brain is, hey, David, I'm, I'm okay. I mastered the technique. Let me go faster. Let me go faster. At that point, when you hear that or when you feel that, you have two choices. You can give in. You can go faster. You might play fast. Or you can not give in. And I tried both. And it's the not giving in to the uh, cry for speed that really makes that technique uh, mastered. If you resist the urge, once you start feeling that warmth, which, you know, it might take 10 minutes. I'm not doing it at the right speed. I need to really re be, be slow so that you can talk over it. When, when, if you can play this while talking, that's the right speed. I'm not going to do it real time because it might last 10, 15 minutes. But at some point, I feel warmth. Okay, I resist the urge to go fast for five more minutes. That's where all the, the precise things happen in your playing. You're really getting very precise with the technique, synchronized, and it's all locked in. And then after that, maybe play super fast five minutes and you'll see that everything is a lot cleaner if you, if you do that. So that's my third tip. And, and really, I would recommend doing that with anything, any song you're memorizing, any technique. Play that thing very slowly. Your fingers are acquiring all the nuances, everything at that level. Then once you feel the warmth, your fingers are telling you, I've acquired this. Don't give in. That is going to be the, the time frame where you're really gluing in the technique into your fingers. And then finally, try it at a faster speed. Those three things really have helped me. So to recap, micro exercises that really focus on the technique. Proper position for the technique. In this case, you kind of be picking. And then the, the speed thing is, is crucial, I think. All right, if you want to go further with this, I prepared for you some exercises, some key exercises. As you go through them, they are tabbed out. I want you to think of these three things, these three, three things that I talked about. How is this exercise um, representative of the technique? What is my position like within the technique? Make sure that you, all the notes are consistent. And then the speed thing that we just talked about. These exercises are tabbed out for you. You can get them for free. All you need to do is visit the link below, which will take you to uh, free product on my website. I was gonna say a course, but it's really a product that uh, combines all the videos. I started doing that in 2019. You can watch the videos and download the backing tracks. You only need to sign up once, it's super easy. And um, just, uh, just do it. All right, thank you so much for watching this. If this is your first visit, consider subscribing if you liked what you saw. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, our new video day here on the channel where we talk about developing that technique. Learning how to use this. This is your pencil. You're the author. Learn how to use a pencil to tell your story. Thank you. I'll see you very soon. Practice well.